Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. Today, I'm gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm getting my hands dirty. It's been a while since I worked on a car and what better car to do with some work on than an R32 GTR. This is Mike. He's the owner of this absolutely gorgeous Bayside Blue R32. And uh, he's been driving the car the way it's meant to be driven, so it's gonna need brakes. So we're gonna do a full brake job all the way around and we'll show you what that all entails. All right guys, so to get started on this, first I wanna go over the stuff you're going to need in order to make this happen. Uh, first thing you're gonna need is a way to get the car into the air. I'm personally using a set of ramps so I can back the car up so that we can jack up from the rear diff. Uh, you'll notice people talk about not jacking up from the frame rails on these cars. I go by that rule as well. So I'm gonna jack it up, that way we can get clearance. Uh, obviously you need a good set of jack stands. These are strong three ton, two ton jack stands I believe, more than enough for this car. Uh, you're gonna need the replacement parts. We got a set of rotors here, actually rotors are here. We got the uh, pads here for you. These pads and rotors are gonna be for the rear end. I have a set in there for the front. We are doing all fours. Uh, we got a brake caliper uh, compression kit to push the piston in. You'll see how we use that. And then you'll need some chemicals like brake cleaner to get the chemicals off of the new rotor to make sure they work right. We got some anti-seize here. We got some brake quiet to help with noise. And this uh, rod is just something to help hold. You can use zip ties, you can use bungee cord, but something to hold the caliper up while you're working on the rotor will be very important. Uh, we also have an impact wrench to get everything off, but with all of that, you should be good to do all the work you need, as you'll see, and we'll get this rotor off and these pads replaced post haste. Once the car is safely in the air, it's time to get the wheel off. Looks like we got this pin we got to pull out here. We got a pin. Okay. Set that aside. Next, you're going to remove the pins holding the brake pads. And I just used a stubby Phillips head to push from behind. They came out really easy. If they seem to be kind of rusted or gunked in, they do have notches for a Phillips head. So you might twist them. That might break them loose a little better, but we didn't have an issue. So this is your tension spring. These are your pins that hold your pads in place. Gotcha. One of the mistakes we made that we didn't show here is we brought a brake compressor, but it didn't really work with these particular set of brakes. A C-clamp is really gonna be your best way to go. Next, you're gonna remove these two bolts is what holds the caliper to the car. Of course, sometimes when uh, you don't have the strength, you gotta use a little gentle persuasion. Given the fact that the rotors have been on the car for quite a while, they're probably rusted or gunked in there, so using a little bit of PB blaster is a great way to get them out. Once again, a little gentle persuasion is sometimes needed to break things loose. It's a good idea to use brake cleaner to just quickly wipe down the rotors. Sometimes they coat them in oil for shipping so they don't rust. Here the rotor didn't want to go on too well because of the e-brake and this is pretty common with uh, cars of this era. There's a little wheel that sits towards the bottom. You can see it here and by rotating it up or down it will move the shoes either in or out. So you want to move them all the way in to fit the rotor on. Thank you. 
once the rotor fits over the e-brake shoes, you're gonna need to calibrate the e-brake. And by doing that, you put a flat head through this little window and you, what you wanna do is you wanna back it off until the rotor won't turn at all and then slowly, one click at a time, turn it the other way until the rotor starts to move and then you know that your e-brake is properly set. And then we start reinstalling the caliper. You're gonna to wanna to put the anti-squeak shim on the back of the brake pad. I also like to add some brake quiet just as a guarantee to keep the brakes from either chattering or squeaking. Once the brake pads are installed, go ahead and put the pins back in that hold the brake pads in place. Don't forget your tension spring. This is where the Phillips head slots on the pins really pay off. This was a genius move on Nissan's part because it lets you spin those pins and it makes it easier to get that clip back into place. Now, of course, when you install your wheel, you want to install the lugs by hand first because you don't want to strip your lugs. Of course, you always want to tighten your wheels in a star pattern. Now that the rears are done, time to move on to the fronts. The cool thing about working on the brakes on the front is you can actually turn the wheels and it makes it easier to get at everything. Just like the rears, you start by removing the clip and the pins. Right off. <laughs> oh, it was lock tighted. What? Weird. Well, I mean, honestly, the people I watch online that do it, they tend to lock tight these things. Really? Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> I've never been able to do this so fast before. It's my first time using the impact wrench. I just got it. I'm so happy. Now this is where Nissan did something a little weird. When we tried to remove the caliper, it didn't want to move. It turns out they used a steel brake line all the way back to almost the car chassis. And then they ran a bracket underneath it to really hold it in place. So there's gonna be two nuts you're gonna to need to remove to give you enough freedom to move the caliper out of the way to get the rotor off. I think we're gonna to have to gently persuade it. Quick clean of the rotor. And of course it slides on real easy because there's no e-brake for the front. Go ahead and reinstall everything. Make sure everything's perfectly tight. Like I said, you don't want any of these bolts coming loose while you're driving.
And of course, once you got everything back together and you're sure everything's tight, always take it for a gentle test drive to make sure everything's working as it should. Stops like a dream. <laughs> And there it is. You know, we actually did a full brake job all the way around on an R32 GTR. I hope you guys enjoyed. As you can see, we did. That's how you know you've had a good day. <laughs> and yes, you, you haven't had a true car day until you've bled. Uh, I didn't, which means I guess I was slacking today. Uh, <laughs> I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button to let me know. It does help the channel out a lot. If you want to see more GTR content in the future, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. If you like, you can now follow me on all forms of social media, which include Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and I'll leave links to those in the description down below. Mike also runs a channel for his R32. If you want to go ahead and join his channel, what is that? Uh, my channel is just called Mike's Garage here on YouTube. Check that out. There's only a couple of videos on there now, but Soon we'll have hopefully a lot more with more stuff going on with this car. And I'll also leave a link to that in the description down below. And do you have Instagram as well? Instagram under PXDN Ninja. I'll let you put that down below. There we go. I have a hard time finding it. Follow me on there for pictures of this and video game stuff. Yep. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions or you feel there's anything I've missed or you need some clarification, go ahead and post in the comments down below. Both myself or Mike will probably be on there. We will respond to you. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you all out on the road.